I've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden ticket in my mind. But that's the only place it will ever be because I ain't winning a real golden ticket to Clash Royale League World Finals this year. Andrew, maybe, who knows? That's who that is. I'm Rich Slayton. That's Andrew Guy. This is Three Crowns, your bi-weekly home for Clash Royale esports news and beyond. And of course, rounding out the squad is two-time regional champion for Clash Royale League, Joshua A.C. Sharon. Andrew, we have reached the end of our community portion of our CRL 2022, almost giving away all six of those golden tickets. The in-game Super CRL series to move to Helsinki, Finland starts just right around the corner. What are we talking about today? It really does feel like the regular season is coming to an end here in Clash Royale League, which means it's playoffs time, baby. That's right, our fifth and sixth golden tickets. Well, technically the fifth has already been given away at the Copa All-Stars. More on that in just a little bit. Royale Masters is down to their final eight, and our final sixth community golden ticket will be given out there. The 20 win challenge is just about to start, which means that'll be uh, four years in a row that I don't get a badge, but you bet I will try, and I'm gonna be sitting down today with community manager Max for an interview talking about CRL 2022 and looking forward into the future. I can't wait to do it, but first, golden ticket number five. Rich, take it away. Let's take a look at the recap for our Copa All-Stars event, the fifth golden ticket just for the North America, Latin America region. Our finals three-day event this weekend got us down to our top eight with some big time names in here. Surge TS, the young surging rookie Arden Toas, and Lucas Gamer last year, number two throughout most of the season, two-time monthly final winner making it hard for himself the whole way through. Fell into the lower bracket, the elimination bracket early on, and then every single game pretty much was just like this by the skin of his teeth, getting those wins, more from him later. On to Arden Toas, the young rookie of the year last year, had a great performance at the end of the season when he finally turned 16. Check out this work against Coca RX, the pace of the cycle with these barrels. Yeah, that's the second one already in this clip. Check out one more barrel coming in, getting around so insanely fast. Coca RX cannot keep up with the pace. Rocket coming in. Arden Toas was in pristine form throughout this event. GG, well played. Back down to our lower bracket. Prestige had been in the winner's bracket final. Lost to Arden, had to go down and fight his way against Lucas again. Check this out, Lucas X Gamer, way behind Prestige right now. Prestige about to take a one game lead, but look at the damage from the Royal Giant. Getting it right back, graveyard down. Check out the pressure on that left-hand side. Fireball in, seven HP, pump that fist, Lucas. Gets a big time game win. He goes on to our grand final against Arden Toas. Game number one, an E-Giant mirror, 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 mirror match. Mirrors are everywhere, especially in this game. And it was Arden taking game number one by a hair. On to game number two. Lucas goes back to what made him great in the first place. Hog Cycle. Remember that? Lucas used to be one of the top Hog Cycle players in the world. Check out that prediction with the guards to protect the Archer Queen against the Miner. You ain't stopping that, Arden Toas. So in our grand final, it's all tied up one and one. Here we go to game number three. And what does Arden Toas do? He pulls out Pump. Bo, are you kidding me? Well, uh, yeah, you are. Didn't work out well as you expect, but remember Arden Toas was the winner's bracket champion, so he had a life to give. We go to the bracket reset. The young rookie wastes no time, doesn't play around, goes straight down the meta, and at this point you see Lucas knows there's no stopping this one. Arden Toas takes the tower, takes the tournament, takes the $15,000, and of course, grabs a hold of that golden ticket trip to Clash Royale League World Finals. He'll be there in Helsinki, Finland. Great job for a man who stood out as one of the top rookies to watch last year. The promise realized here, can he become a world champion? We'll find out later. Of course, we do still have one more golden ticket to give. The Royal Masters Golden Edition has reached its final stage. You can watch July 30th and 31st to see which one of these eight players will take that final golden ticket of our community stage for this competition. But of course, that's only six of the 16 spots. There are 10 more. For a little bit more on that, let's go to our resident Clash Royale competitive expert, Joshua A.C. Sharon.
I recently learned that when bears hibernate, uh, they don't actually sleep throughout the entire winter. And so that's kind of how it is with Clash Royale. Right now, we're just warming up. This was kind of the hibernation. This is where it all starts. Here we are. We do have the world finalist Samuel Basoto, Muhammad Light, Mugi, Gens, Aslan, Arden, Toas, and Royale Masters. Uh, that will be filled in later with the actual player. Those are our top six who have made it to the world finals already but uh there's still 10 empty slots and here we go we do see the names it's you maybe you could be you why not you it could be anybody it could be you it could be your mom it could be your father it could be your sister it could be your brother it could be a neighbor it could be a classmate you i i will say in, in one of my chemistry classes i had a classmate that was very very good at clash royale and who knows, if he was still playing, I think he could have been able to qualify. Here we are, September 23rd through the 25th. Here we go, the six stages to be able to qualify and get yourself into the world final. Stage one is a 20 win challenge. Simple enough, you just gotta win 20 times before you lose three. Uh, you know, it, it's simple enough, sort of. Uh, that's gonna be happening August 6th through the 11th. Stage two is gonna be a ladder a 10 uh 10 games in order to get yourself into the next stage that's going to be august 15th through the 19th stage three is going to be a double elim i could say double elimination but i'm going to have fun with it a uh, double elim and that's going to be august 27th stage four it's going to uh it's going to go over to the swiss bracket that's going to be september 3rd stage fifth or stage five is also going to be a swiss bracket in september 10th and then stage six, let's say you weren't able to qualify, that's okay. It, it, this is the great thing about Clash Royale, and you know, it, it, it doesn't matter how many times you fail, there's always that last chance qualifier. You, you can kind of get away with it. Last chance qualifier is gonna be on September 11th. Uh, you know, make sure to check out all this information at esports.clashroyale.com. That's all the information with CRL, golden tickets, uh, a, a cool new bear fact if you didn't know that. Uh, we have an interview with the great Max. All right, I am here with Community Manager Max, one of the pieces, the integral parts that make Clash Royale and Clash Royale League work. First of all, Max, how are you? I'm excited to see you in just about a month. I'm doing great. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm of course, super excited man. I mean, too. We we're really excited to have you here uh, on the channel. I mean, it was fun to pick your brain at World Finals, so I'm going to pick your brain right now starting with okay so this is our very first era of everyone because you know not everyone can qualify on ladder like we did last year this is the first year where truly anyone can compete i want to ask you quickly uh, about the positives and negatives do you, what do you think worked really really well about having this era of everyone and what did you think maybe we can look at uh, a little bit more closely in 2023 well, I think like one of the main goal when we changed the format for this year was to amplify and empower community projects and organization. So I think this has been very successful because besides uh, Golden Ticket tournaments, we've also helped and support a lot of uh, smaller tournaments and more local tournaments. So clearly on that part, I think it was a true success. <clears throat> As for uh, things that could be better, it could be reworked, uh, there's always uh, things to improve, of course, and for every piece of feedback coming from tournaments organizer, players, or even viewers, uh, we are taking this on board. I just think we need to wait for the whole year to be over, uh, to take a step back, uh, look at the big picture, and see exactly what went great and what went not so great. Uh, I'm, just one thing I can think of off the top of my head is uh, some regions that have been underrepresented this year, so this would surely be one area of improvement yeah i mean the community support has been incredible this year and when you look at the people that have already qualified it honestly does really feel like it's working um talking about those other tournaments in the community uh from the biggest to the smallest what was your favorite qualifying format you know we had the thousand person in-game tournament the global tournament we had swiss we had ladder back in 2021 is there one that you truly uh love the most even if it's just from a personal point of view uh yeah, the in-game tournaments like the 1000 players in-game tournaments uh i think it's the best first phase filter uh because it just it allows a lot of players to actually participate easily to join the tournament and it also gives uh exposure and visibility to content creators hosting the tournaments so really i think that in-game integration in general is a really good thing and something we want to 
uh, facilitate in the future. And that's also why I'm super excited about the five weeks of Clash Royale Link starting in August with everything happening directly in game. Yeah, I mean, me too. I can't wait to see it. And, and like you said, the streaming community has been on top of it. The, the numbers on Twitch and on YouTube have grown, at least in my mind. Every time I log in, it seems like there's more and more viewers there. So whatever you guys are doing does seem to be working right now. So is that being one of your guys' biggest accomplishments as an entire team and as CRL as a whole, how about for you, man? From when the, you first joined uh, the team as community manager, what do you think is maybe your biggest accomplishment that you've put forth? On the personal level, I don't really know, but I think like as a team effort, uh, I would say like the champions update, like from last year, uh, it was really kind of a risky update with the introduction of level 14, like something didn't go as well as planned, that's uh, on us, but I think in the end, the team managed to uh, pull it off and it was one of the most successful updates in the story of the game, so it helped turn the tide, I think, regarding the state of the game. And it's something like we're really proud of like, as a team. Yeah, we uh, we kind of talked about it at the World Finals last year on stage, you, me, and Rick, and and, and now a year later True. with the next World Finals coming up, I truly do believe that Champions was one of the absolute greatest things that could have ever been introduced in Clash Royale. So yes, I, I tip my hat to you, you guys there, because I love them. Um, but with adding that in, like you said, was very difficult. What do you think has been the most different, difficult, excuse me, balance update or change? What has been the hardest card even or situation to deal with for you guys? Because you know, you guys are really, really tapped into the community. You hear all the feedback, like you said just a moment ago. What has been the most difficult balance for you? Champions, <laughs> again, I think even, <laughs> yeah. if, it's, yeah, I mean, even if they were, uh, they were introduced uh, last year, they changed the game so much that uh, I think, yeah, it's really like the, the biggest discussion we had is still about champions because we want them to be uh, strong, obviously not too strong. And when we start working on new champions, like for example, the last one, uh, the Mighty Miner, uh, testing it internally, it's always about finding the best concept and the right balance between gameplay, strength and fun. And it's definitely more challenging than a regular card. And I think maybe one, uh, yeah, one other thing would be like when we start reworking cards, like most recently, the best example is the Mirror. Right. And uh, yeah, it's always challenging because we aren't just tweaking some stats, but actually rethinking how a card should work and how it should be used. So yeah, it's always like very challenging. Yeah, the reworking of certain cards. I mean, we were just kind of gushing about Fire Spirit the other day, and it feels like it was so long ago, but something that small was so significant. Um, I, I guess I got two more questions for you. I know you're a very, very busy man. So the, the first one is more to all the people that kind of look up to what you do. You're a community manager for one of the biggest games in the entire world, and a game that obviously everyone watching the show loves. Uh, do you have any advice to anyone that would love to maybe one day be in your shoes? N not take your job, we don't want to do that, <laughs> but maybe be a community manager in another huge game. It might sound like a, an obvious answer, is that you need to have the passion about games, about community, and you have to be really like to, to be ready to put yourself out there and get out of your comfort zone. I mean, best advice I can tell is you can start small by managing social media for a small sports team, for example, or administrating a, a Discord server about the game you like or pretty much anything you like. So be involved in the community. And uh, yeah, I think education is obviously important, but it's not everything. So don't overlook like your personal network. Keep yourself informed about uh, what's new in marketing and social media and, uh, yeah, and work on your communication skills, obviously. Yeah, I mean, you guys that have been community managers since I joined have been absolutely wonderful, and I love what you guys have done with the game. And again, I, I really commend you guys for, for taking as much time to respond to the community as you do. Sometimes I just mute stuff on Twitter and move on with my life, <laughs> and I know that's not really an option for you guys. So the last question I have, a super fun one. We're going to hang out in about a month, Max. Where am I taking you to dinner, or where are you taking me to dinner? What's something that I have to eat in Helsinki? Are you a meat eater? Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> Have you have you ever tested the uh, reindeer meat? No, I never yeah. have. That's my answer. So there's like a typical Finnish dish. I don't know the name, but it's like reindeer meat, uh, mashed potatoes, uh, pickles, and uh, lingonberries. And that's really like the one of the my favorite dish here in Finland. Also the salmon soup, but it's oh. more like a starter. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like two two of the typical dishes in Finland. 
All right, salmon soup for appetizers. We'll move on to Rudolph for the main course. Uh, Max, it's been such a treat talking to you, man. I always love doing it, and I really appreciate We all here at Three Crowns appreciate you taking your time to sit down with us today. Uh, I'll see you in a month at World Finals, brother. Yes, thank you very much again for having me, and yeah, see you in a month. Rich, do you hear that, man? We're having salmon soup for apps, and we're eating Rudolph for dinner. It's reindeer steaks, baby. What are you? I feel like he just told us we're about to go eat baked penguin. What are you talking about? We're eating a reindeer. I, you know what? I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need to take some time to get my get my heart right with that one, man. The, the, you know what, Andrew? We've been through many journeys over the years. We've been through years of CRL. We're gonna go eat a reindeer, I guess, here in a in a month or so. Uh, but for this journey, today's episode, we have come to the end. What does everyone have to do one more time today? Well, apparently, if you're in Finland, uh, you have to eat reindeer. But, however, what you got to do, guys, subscribe to the channel. How many times do I have to say it? Make sure you're subscribed and turn on notifications because as we ramp up towards the end of the season, you're not going to want to miss a moment of action. Check out esports.clashroyale.com for all of that information in a centralized place where you can read it all, digest it yourself, and then join in on that 20-win tournament. So you better start practicing right now, right here. And, of course, you can follow all of us on Twitter. But most importantly, follow Esports Royale, E-N, to follow with everything that they have to let you guys know about as World Finals progresses. That's it for our episode today. It's been so much fun bringing you the best of CRL in our community portion. Get ready, buckle up, CRL 22 on its way. For Andrew Guy, Joshua Sharon, and everyone here at Clash Royale Esports, I'm Rich Slayton. We'll see you next time right back here on Three Crowns.